Previously on The Code, Life with the Mariners. Well, the atmosphere is electric. Well, there'll be no offside here. It's a back pass, and McBreen has got his second of the evening. One thing I was very happy with, huh? I thought that we kept Dano real quiet. As we all know, I can't surf, so I have to ride this big boat. One of the funniest things I've ever seen in my entire life. What? What? <laughs> We snapped the paddleboard in half. We played at the best of our ability. I've told you this many times, no one can touch us. The only thing that can undo us is ourselves. How the hell was we out of power? Right, you can go, please. What for? Off to the Jeez, I'll tell you what, you got thin skin, you boys. Was it because of last Sunday playing in the heat? Was it because maybe 37 degrees on your day off knocked you about because you're out doing things, the beach and etc. They're questions I can't answer. Sport is peppered with quirks and idiosyncrasies, but one mariner has his own unique ritual. Um, it probably all started at the start of this season, something that a couple of boys we had, um, and then it just built on from there, you know, new player each day, and, and next week it'll be another player join on, and it's just a matter of uh, coming in and remembering all the handshakes, but, you know, doing it every day, it just comes, you know, second nature, and just get used to it. All up, 12 to 15. Two out of 23 in the playing squad, so there's quite a few there to remember, but I get through them all every day. I've made up a couple, and um, a couple of boys have come to me with ideas, so yeah, it's a bit of you know like a focus group. I oh, mean, Matty's pretty fast, uh, so you might have to get your slow motion camera out. And there's one for me and Mitchell. He has a chicken wing tattoo. It's actually a phoenix, but Arnie called it a chicken wing one day, so. We just use that, and me and Hutch have another one. He calls me Sarge, just for an old nickname, and uh, we use a little salute there. As the players prepare for the upcoming game against the Newcastle Jets, there is a heartfelt act of contrition from the club's figurehead. My suspension, if I look back out of the emotional side of things after the, uh, with the game and what I did say, and I will say that the match review panel has pretty much said it was nothing. I should have only just got a warning after what I did say. Um, so I have to serve the man if we one game suspension, so we have to come up with a, a plan on Saturday. I can't talk to anyone uh, two hours from two hours before the game. But if I can make a point now that, again, I made a bad example and it has to stop. It's not helping anybody. We would put ourselves in a great position and uh, we don't want ill discipline to uh, to, to stuff our season up, basically, and, and it could happen where 
you know, I'd rather me get suspended at this stage than anyone. You know, I know that's no, uh, no consolation, but um, I, I'm, I need to apologise myself to you guys. I'm not setting, I didn't set a good example by my behaviour. I hope you accept it, but it was, you know, the frustration of the first half. I think we all accept that we get over it <coughs> and get on with uh, the rest of the season, which has been fantastic. Not the most glamorous job in the world, but a necessity to keeping players on the park is the care of their feet. Hey, hey bud. Just doing some modelling of the feet. I've just come to train this morning and uh, see my good mate Percy to, uh, to get my feet cleaned up. Percy comes in probably once a month to uh, look after the boys. It's some of the, the dirtier jobs that, that I definitely require as a footballer. Footballers often get physio treatment and, uh, and massages and that sort of thing, but uh, this podiatry work done by Percy is uh, really important to make sure that our feet don't get too sore, especially in a, in a hot climate. So he's a, it's a fantastic asset to the club and uh, one that's obviously really necessary. At the beginning of the year, I look at them all sort of biomechanically, the way they run, and we give them orthotics if they've got injuries, but probably more importantly to stop them having injuries. A simple ingrown toenail or a, a breakdown in the tissue can keep someone out for a few weeks, the same as a muscle strain or a ligament tear can. During the year, I probably come up once every three or four weeks, clean their feet up, take the pressure areas off their feet. Again, just to prevent problems happening before they happen. Being a footballer involves promotional work. Happy birthday, mate. How are you? Oliver Bazanik, born and bred on the Central Coast, is more than happy to give back to the community what the community gave to him and help out the next generation in achieving their goals. Anyone want to play for the Mariners one day? Yeah? Are you famous? No. <laughs> Bazanik visits local school Star of the Sea for the day and gives a training session to the children, which is thoroughly enjoyed by everyone, and hopefully will develop the next Central Coast Mariner. And then you pass it to the next person, and then they're off, okay? So as you can see behind me, we've just set up a game, and we're just about to have a bit of a five or six players versus five or six players in a game. I mean, it's just great to get out to, to Star of the Sea. One of our supporters in, uh, in the A-League, all, all the schools support us, and we, uh, we support them as well, so it's great to be out in the local community. Oliver? Yeah. Bozanek! That's it. It's great, because uh, I'm, I'm a local myself, so the Mariners went around when I was growing up, and there was no local A-League team or NSL team. I would have loved these sort of activities or days after school where you could meet someone from uh, the from the A-League and be taught a little bit by them. I'll show you how to take a throw, guys. So when you're taking a throw, you know how to. You got to keep both. You got to keep both feet on the ground, and then just lean back and throw like that, okay? The Mariners are set up now. You know we've got a great development through all the juniors, so there's a good pathway for young local Central Coast people to to follow and to uh, potentially be an A-League player one day. Hutch, Rosie and myself are out here with our families just coming to spend the day at the Reptile Park. Kids love it. Uh, the Roses and myself haven't been here before, our families, so it's good for the kids. They're excited to see the snakes and the reptiles and the emus and kangaroos and stuff. It's all exciting. <laughs> Sick. What animal are you being? What animal are you being? Kangaroos, <laughs> In the beginning, since he's been here, he's been big on getting everyone involved and being a real family club. And you know, he's real good on us being mates as well as teammates. You know, out there, and he's always trying to organise things where we get together and maybe have lunch or spend the day at the park with the kids. There's no tall poppies at the club. Everyone's on the same level of par, whether they've been here for eight years or whether they've been here for eight minutes. It just breeds a real family atmosphere, and you know, you're going to have mates here that you'll you'll have for the rest of your life because we're so close and uh, you know so much about each other and. Uh, spend a lot of time with each other. Daddy, <laughs> daddy, 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 daddy,
Since I've, I've had my children, football has probably taken, sort of been put back a step. Not that I don't love the game and I, I give everything to it. Definitely family comes first for me. My wife will probably say different. She thinks football comes first. She's bringing the snake out here, yeah. Has she got a real bad thing about snakes? Oh, she hates reptiles, basically. <laughs> <laughs> this is like her worst nightmare. Come on, Jed, come over, especially. Oh, daddy, 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 daddy. In my mind, I, I love my family and I'd do anything for them, but for me, football is what uh, helps me give them what, what I can. So I try my best on the field knowing that my family are going to benefit from that. So they sort of work together and, and it's great for me. Jenny, you got to sit down if you want to hold the snake. to bring the snake out. <laughs> You're not the person you are without the family, the way they shape and mould you and uh, you're always there for each other. And, we're lucky in our sport and you know our job that we get to spend a lot more time than other people do with their families. So in that respect, we're quite lucky. Oh, turn it back to me, bud. I'm not happy about the head, by the way. Yeah, I'm not happy about the head either. Got to let talk to you, bro. Got to let talk to you. You know, we can be home and spend all afternoon with our kids, whereas other people, you know, they're out the door at 7:30 in the morning and don't get home till six, and only get to see their kids for an hour or two. And I think that's one of the great perks of you know being a footballer is that you do get to spend that time and enjoy your kids when they're young and get out and do things like this. It's one thing that we know that we're very lucky for and we're very thankful for. Being the partner of a professional footballer has its upsides and downsides. Three such partners are Jenny Rose, Kate Hutchinson and Gabby Stockton. I guess getting to come to promos and things like this with the family and getting the hands-on experience. Not having to work through pregnancies has been an upside. Yeah. Well, the boys, yeah. are, they get a lot more time with the kids than the average dad would. But then, flip side, they are away a fair bit too. And the waiting game of not knowing where you're going to be at the end of a certain contract. Like in five months' time. <laughs> After a game, it obviously depends on the result. Um, we've had a few blues when there's a loss, <laughs> when there's red cards involved. You know, just not to talk sometimes, yeah. <laughs> It's a good lifestyle here. After being at a few different clubs, this has been the first club that's really like being family orientated in yep. get-togethers and involving the wives and all the kids. And as I said before, a lot of people wouldn't get the opportunity to do this, so being with the Mariners, having the boys be able to do this is a really positive note for us as a family. The Mariners sit top of the table and have done so for the past eight weeks. Now is not the time to become complacent. I think the one point we got against Melbourne Victory um, on the weekend was a massive point. You know, we, the first half we, it was probably our worst half of football in a very long time, and to uh, pull ourselves out of the mess and end up with a point against a team that everyone fancies as uh, potential champions is a massive effort for us. So far, it's been a great season. You know, we're top of the league. We've had some great games where we scored loads of goals, and everybody's playing well, and we're we're working well as a unit. Season, McBreen into the area, lovely quick feet. Daniel McBreen with the opening goal. You know, we just got to keep rolling on and, and keep improving as a team. I think everyone, because we're at the top, everyone's looking to beat us. Everyone tries that little bit harder to, to beat us week in, week out now. So, so we've got to keep improving ourselves and improving our level and, and try and stay at the top. Duke! great success so far but we're only halfway through the season and we know we have to continue on with that same form and uh, the same manner to, to be there at the end. The derby on the weekend obviously a big game against Newcastle and they'll be up for it. Uh, we won the last game so they'll be looking to get some revenge and we'll be on our toes to keep them at bay and hopefully get another three points and have bragging rights for a little bit longer. Here we are at Blue Tongue Stadium. We've just finished the training session. Uh, we're just going to take you for a quick tour of the change room. All right, so here's basically the area we walk into before a game. Media rooms, we come in here. It's a rule to take your boots off before you enter the change room, so it's a big fine. We've got the massage area through here. 
boys on the table. Basically, this little area in here is where the coaches come on match day. It's a spare change room, but the coaches just come in here and have their little meetings, so it gives them a bit of privacy. We've got Juki. Juki, here he is. Birthday boy. Hey, how old are you today? 22, mate. <laughs> How's the rub going, Ollie? Hey? Yeah, it's uh, not, not a bad rub today. Not Paul, a bad rub? Yeah, it's not bad. Paulie? It's not bad. Paul is, uh, Paulie's doing the right job. He's, he's awake today. He's taking a couple of no-doses, so he's yeah. all good. Yeah. Basically, this is our change rooms. Everyone's got their own locker. They're not numbered, but uh, Rick, Rick Caddy brings all the gear into the change rooms and hangs it all up, and everyone's got their own spot. This is my home away from home. How about in here? What gets stored in here? It's stored in there. gets nothing. On match day, just to keep the clutter out of the way, I'll even use this little hidden agenda here. It's a yeah. nice place to put your bag. Um, create space and there's that open plan for you. Nice. Change it's very fortunate for people like you because you get to use the top area. They did buy a step ladder for me, but it's, I have taken it home. We've got all the bins allocated with all the towels in them. We're not the smartest of children, so Rick writes it on the front, towels, shirts, jumper, shorts. And that's another fine if you mix that up. What's going on here with the chest hair? It's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a hit in the change rooms, eh? The boys like hey? it. The girls like it. Girl or girls? Girls. <laughs> oh, very affirmative. Girls, not girl. Clarky, short session today, eh? Yeah, I didn't really like it. I usually like about a uh, 75 minute warm up. I'm a bit disappointed. 12 minutes, it's not really enough. It was a bit warm. Yeah, a little bit warm today. Good. Good. But, yeah. Stay out of the sun. 4.01 is the time. 4.01. 4.01, we're allowed in the sun. This is our area where we walk out to on match day, so tomorrow night we'll come out through this rank here. We always line up on the left, and the away team line up on the right-hand side. And then when the Foxtel gives us the all clear, we, we basically come out through this section here. And that's it. It's the stadium ready to go. Reporting from uh, Blue Tongue Stadium, Adriano Pellegrino, over and out. As game day begins, there are a few talking points to be discussed at local radio station 2GO. The Derby 29 later on this afternoon at Blue Tongue Central Coast Stadium and on the line is the Mariners head coach for a day. It's Mossy Masoy, a.k.a. Phil Moss. Good morning. Tell us about this, uh, how it's going to work this afternoon with Arnie in the air-conditioned booth upstairs and you down on the sideline. The important thing is from my perspective is that I just keep the ship sailing in the in the same direction Arnie's had it for the last two and a half seasons. Arnie's a boss, he's, he's been a fantastic mentor to me and uh, I guess this is a chance in some ways to, to show how much I've learnt from him over the years. Mate, there's rumours coming out of Blue Tongue that uh, you, you, talk, you touched on the fact that Arnie's the boss, um, that there's going to be a, a new man in the mascot suit tonight and that'll be Arnie who's going to be yelling instructions uh, <laughs> at the players so he's not going to be dancing around like he normally does Marvin there's going to be a lot of uh, secret covert operations going on tonight I'm sure but yeah, FFA yeah, will be all over the place there'll be a secret squirrel down there <laughs> let's get on to this match Derby 29 13 times they've played at Blue Tongue Central Coast Stadium the Mariners are totally dominant six wins six draws and just one loss in that period that's remarkable Remarkable considering how close this derby fixture has been over the years. Yeah, that's right, Steve. -O. And uh, you know, I mean, everyone talks about the the grand final win that the that Newcastle had over over the Mariners. Sorry, Lois, when I had to mention it, but uh, thanks, Paul. That, uh, <laughs> all the Newcastle fans will say that that gives them bragging rights. And Tommy Roggett's what an opportunity for the young man to go to Celtic. The chance that he might have to play in the uh, Champions League next month. Yeah, they play Juventus in the final last 16. The first day of training when um, Tommy turned up there in Spain, they, they were doing five-a-sides and Tommy, <laughs> Tommy's the five-a-side king, so obviously made a big impression. Yeah, he's only had 24 A-League games. And if, you, if you believe in your own ability and you believe you dream, sometimes dreams come true. And for Tom Rogic, a, a young guy from Canberra a year and a half ago with, with some talent, now he's, he's at one of the biggest clubs in the world, playing in front of 60,000 people. He's been rounded, Rogic will score, and he does! It is five for the Central Coast Mariners! So yeah, that's here we go. Game day. Can't be late, eh? What happens if we're late on game day? Fines. Big fines. Copped a few of those before. Don't worry about that. 
the match day's doubled, so we're looking at 100. And you can't even change your watch or your time because it runs off of uh, all off of Hutch's, Hutch's iPhones. But today's going to be a bit different for the boys as uh, um, Graham Arnold suspended. So he's uh, not allowed near or around the boys. I don't know, he might try, might try and make a few phone calls uh, on the way to the ground. I think a couple of boys' phones might be running hot. Get a few messages across. I reckon uh, Caceres to score and McBreen to score the other one. McBreen's been flying. Everything he touches turns to gold. I've tried to give him a $50 note and turn it into a $100 note, but uh, he, got, he coloured it in and gave it back to me, it didn't work. Yeah, your mind's at a different level. I mean, when you're playing, you're focusing, you start picturing what you're going to do in the afternoon. I mean, what, what position you're playing, who your opponent is. You start picturing, visual, visualising how the game's going to pan out, what you're going to do, what you have to do, what your job is. You start actually going through the motions. Whether you're playing or not, you still come to the ground with that, um, with that eagerness. I mean, it's, it's a team sport and you always want, want your team and your, and your mates to do well and, and you want to you wanna win. Inside, McGlinchey still going, lovely feed, McGlinchey! And just palmed over the crossbar. Do you reckon if Arnie was on the bench, it would be different? The boys always know he's there. The Jack is still there. Do you reckon Arnie would have got his message through? Obviously, he might have had too far. I think uh, they definitely would have spoke about something that they, uh, if this would have happened. He would have said something to Mosky. McGlinchey. Rose will get another chance for Zanek. Rose wants it again. Now can they produce the final balls? Deflected, saved by Virigini. And cleared by Galloway. And that was almost the chance for the Mariners. It was Boic. Just two wins now in their last six matches. But they are still three points clear at the top. Next time on The Code. Life with the Mariners. Girls, are we going to win tomorrow? That's the big question. I hope so. Well, no, I think so. I think Top so. of the table. I think of so. course. Yeah. I like always it. find that if I go to the toilet while the game's going on, <laughs> yeah, this they, is they, cool. they, they always happen. <laughs> Can somebody remove that goal? Well, it's seriously. With pace. <laughs> Rose it, has to delay the pass now. Here's McGlinchey as a decoy. McBrain! Oh! The well, how many chances do they need, the Mariners? Milo, you've got to be looking to get him behind. That's the one. That's the one you're in. Go on, son. Go on, son. Get him. Oh! Yeah. You're here. <laughs> yeah!